Hey people, it's Nayas talking. Now, I would like to thank an Instagram page called Black History Unlocked, and the source I'm using today is wunc.org news, and here is the article name, 1920s black owned safe bus, we don't have to ride in the back. So this is Black History, the safe bus company. During segregation, bus routes in Winston-Salem that brought workers to the city's major employers did not extend into black neighborhoods that often meant long walks to the main routes or trolley lines until Safe Bus. The state's first African-American-owned transportation company was formed in the mid-1920s to service the East Winston community, and it continued operating until 1972 when it became part of the Winston-Salem Transit Authority. On a sunny day in downtown Winston-Salem, the morning rush of the city's main bus terminal is over. Passengers form short lines, drivers meander in and out with partially filled cabins, the river on the palace like a slow shuffle. Winston-Salem Transit Authority Marketing Manager Tina Carson Wilkins says there is a lot of history here at the Clark Campbell Transportation Center. Beginning with the facility's namesake, people were Mr. Campbell under the pedestal because he was literally someone that everybody knew who drove or worked in public transportation in Winston-Salem for 63 years, said Carson Wilkins. Many of those years were spent behind the wheel of a safe bus. The black-owned transportation company was formed in 1926 to serve the African-American community getting people to and from work at a time when trolleys ruled ex- ru- roads extending into white neighborhoods only. So people in East Winston needed to either walk to where the trolleys were, get on the trolleys, and go to the back of those vehicles, or they would have to get a ride to where they could pick up a trolley, says Carson Wilkins. For, those, for years, those rides were provided by jitneys, small buses and other passenger cars. Some two dozen independent jitney drivers fiercely competed for nickel fares in vehicles that were often dangerous to operate. Rivalries, altercations, and complaints to city hall officials eventually led to an ultimatum, work together or don't work at all. In April of 1926, 21 of them met, agreed to merge services and form a company that would meet the needs of the underserved East Winston community. Safe bus company stocks were sold, $100,000 were raised, fares were set at five cents a ride, and the service began one month later. 97-year-old Jamie Morrison was born and raised in Winston-Salem. She remembers those early years well. Her older siblings, like many of African Americans in the community then, worked for R.G. Reynolds Tobacco Company. A lot of people back then, as I was growing up, was walking, says Morrison, and then when the weather was bad, like during the wintertime and the cold weather and everything, they relied on the buses for transportation. Morrison says safe bus was embraced by the community for other reasons as well. The drivers were friendly, wore nice uniforms, and the riders knew one another. Another contributing factor rose to the top. We didn't have to sit in the back of the bus riding safe bus because it was owned by blacks. Please remember that. By the time Rosa Parks helped ignite the civil rights movement, safe bus had been in operation for nearly 30 years. Demand for the service was strong. The short haul routes to densely populated East Winston, roughly 20% of the city, was highly profitable and safe bus was hiring. At 21 years old, Priscilla Stevens became the company's first female driver, instructed by none other than Clark Campbell himself. And I want to just just stop right there. You keep having all these feminists talk about, oh, black women were oppressed. This is before the feminist movement, and black women were being hired by black men. And they didn't need to have any arguing or lobbying or protest. Oh, but I guess this is just going to be ignored and uh, papered over. And he trained me one day, like on a Friday, and I had to go to the Department of Motor Vehicles, say Stevens. That Sunday, I had a route of my own. I worked from 5.15 that morning to 11.40 that night, two shifts. Stephen says she enjoyed the work, always loved to drive, 32 years accident-free, but she says being with Safe Bus was more than just a job. You become family once you get to know everybody, says Stevens. So I was with them in the morning when they get on the bus and go to walk, work. In the afternoon, they look for me when they got ready to go home. So they got to the point where they would bring me gifts during Christmas and this kind of stuff. So we got along just fine. Safe Bus continued to grow its fleet, acquired Camel City Cub, Cab, and the black community took pride in the company's success. In 1968, after Winston Salem's contracted bus carrier left town, Safe Bus was told by the city to fill that void and provide transportation to all residents. That made it the largest African American owned and operated transportation business in the country. Its history is preserved at the Winston Salem African American Archive. Boxes and boxes of articles, documents, and photos dating back to the 19th century. Vice President Janita Johnson was born and raised in this city. 
She says at that particular time in history, there was not one other company like Safe Plus anywhere. And yet she says it's history, like many other contributions made by the black community, here is rarely taught in schools and entirely underrepresented. We have deep roots in Winston-Salem. African Americans have deep roots here, says Johnson. And it's not just from the factories, it's from the people who help create these businesses. It's people who help create schools. So to me, it just feels as if they believe that there's just nothing that we have that's attached here. And because of that, I think that archive is important. Safe bus formed out of the practice of segregation and eventually ended due to integration. Forced to cover the entire city, including non-productive routes, lack of equipment, competition and rising automobile ownership, and a majority population not as willing to ride black-operated buses, meant the end of Safe Bus. So you see it right there in writing. A black business was destroyed by integration. I mean, people keep cheering the Montgomery bus boycotts and um, Rosa Parks. And I'm not saying they were inherently bad. They did what they thought was right at the time because they were fighting for justice. But we have to look at these things in retrospect and ask what was the result of this. Instead of fighting to have their own black companies like Safe Bus in Winston-Salem, they were fighting to get on the white man's bus. And look where it got everybody. In 1972, the city purchased the company's assets, retained its staff, and became what it remains today, 50 years later, part of the Winston-Salem Transit Authority. And there was a, I think, a black-owned paramedic ambulance service in Philadelphia, if I remember correctly, and the same fate befell it. It eventually got absorbed into the city. And I wanted to bring this up because I commented yesterday on a post about Babe Ruth, uh, Babe Ruth and uh, the, the Negro Leagues at the time. And it was saying Babe Ruth wanted to give, bring black players in and he would distribute $1,500 to them, which was a lot of money. And I commented, integration did not help black people, so it's nothing to be celebrated. And someone commented, that's your opinion. No, it is not my opinion. It is fact. It is documented right here that a black business went out of business because of integration. So please tell me, having black ownership taken over by a white majority city government, how is that helpful? And I keep bringing this up because we need to look back at the history and understand it for what it actually resulted in, not these rose-colored glasses, not looking at Rosa Parks sitting at the front and saying, yeah, and then losing control of ownership and then being in the bus but not being able to control the destination. Or, I mean, I have a dream as Martin Luther King said, and not realizing that dreams are fantasies. They, they don't, they're not necessarily part of the real world. And again, it's not to disrespect these people or what they fought for. They were good people who tried to do their best in a difficult time. But we have to be honest about what the results were. So anyway, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.